Hey everybody, uh, my name is Logan Libera, and I'm going to be drawing um, Tate Bishop and Clinton Francis Barton, otherwise known as Hawkeye, and uh, I'm pretty excited, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with Hawkeye's uh, face and head. And uh, right now I'm just sort of roughing out, roughing out this idea. Um, I'm sort of blocking out where everything goes. It's kind of a weird thing, but it just helps me with balance. Sort of gets me uh, where I need to be for the for the end. You can sort of see these strange shapes. Um, this just sort of lets me know where things can go uh, before I start breaking down all the other pieces. I've always been a big fan of Hawkeye. Um, West Coast Avengers was one of my favorite books. Uh, of course, The Avengers. And... Uh, I, I just think I like him so much because he's one of those characters that could be any of us, right? He um, he's dancing with gods the way I sort of think about it. You know, he's he's this mortal who um, you know he's gifted with incredible skills, but they're skills that are trained, you know, like an Olympic athlete or something. It's not it's not the same as um, as uh, you know, Cap or the Hulk or Iron Man, who they have abilities, enhancements, or gadgets uh, that are just incredibly, uh, incredible enhancements. They, he is really just this amazing human being with high athletic physical levels and this incredible ability uh, to shoot this bow. Of course, he's a bit of a smartass and he's always got a good comeback and he's got a little bit of an angry streak but these are all the things that uh, make him uh, sort of special to me they, they do, that's what I really enjoy about him and the fact that he's always sort of stood his ground and said what's on his mind to these gods to these you know these extremely powerful characters I think that's amazing so I sort of blocked out a little piece here this is sort of uh, just my first rough. I work in layers when I'm doing digital, and I will drop things and use different pencils um, at different sizes. You know, I uh, I um, I'm self-taught, so I sort of I sort of use whatever works to get me my shapes and to get the story told. Um, my first teacher was a man that if you're Marvel comic book artist fan or uh, fan of the history of Marvel um, you'll know him my first teacher was Al Williamson and um, I love the man he used, we used to we used to work uh, he used to come into a store I worked at and uh, we would just uh, discuss art and all things cool that were about Marvel and I had no idea who he was at the time I grew up in a void I grew up in a very strict family environment with no comics so when he came in and started talking to me I, I <laughs> I'm sorry I hate to admit it but I didn't know who he was um, I just thought he was this sweet person helping this really bad artist uh, this noob out with his art you know and he'd do little quick sketches for me and we'd talk uh, comics and you know things like that and I just thought he was just an amazing person because he was giving his time to me I actually didn't know who he was until uh, somebody said to me dude do you know who that is that's that's the great Al Williamson and then I dove into his comics and and uh, I, I couldn't believe it I was floored but you know it was an amazing relationship um, he helped me when I was feeling down he helped me with tips he'd, he'd get man and uh, he'd help me by having his friends sort of chime in and do phone calls for me and and um 
it was crazy. I just couldn't believe the amount of help he gave me. And I'm forever grateful. It's, it's uh, just an amazing thing for anyone to do, for anybody who's trying to break into an industry late in life. I started drawing late. Uh, this is not something I did like many artists their whole lives. Um, so if you are aspiring and you feel like you feel like maybe you know you're it's too late if the energy passion and the willingness to learn is there don't give up uh, let's see here this a little bit for the greater plan and for me you know it's it's a matter of um, just finding what works you know where where you want your light sources to be and all that stuff and sometimes I'll just rough them out real quick idea of where I'm going later with the drawing you know it's there sort of in the background and again um, I'm just using techniques that work for me over the years and you should do what feels right but I will say this lots of life drawing uh, everyone says it's cringeworthy but um, if you really want to master drawing and storytelling do a lot of life drawing um, sometimes it'll feel like the homework your teacher gave you that you don't want to do but it's so important to the overall uh, plan of you becoming a good artist, right? Um, it used to frustrate me too. Uh, but then uh, after countless rejection letters and keep trying letters from editors, I realized that, you know, you have to incorporate life drawing. You have to incorporate proper muscle structure. Because before you want, before you exaggerate it, you have to make sure, you know, what the, a regular human looks like or a regular cat or a regular car or, you know before you start building fantastic stuff you have to sort of know where where it comes from and I when I first started I didn't I um, I never went to art school uh, or art lessons I just didn't want to listen to anybody I, I thought I knew it all but um, now it's a little bit different now um, I do take art lessons. I sit out in a park and I watch people. Um, I watch daily life um, because I think you have to. Um, so, uh, I just got a question from YouTube. What is my drawing setup? So I like to do multiple, I use multiple types of software depending on what's needed. If it's, uh, if it's for concept painting for video game and design, I mostly stick to Photoshop. But when I'm doing quick basic layouts, storyboards or black and white art, or trying to simulate, um, a comic book page, I use Procreate or Sketchbook Pro. And um, um, for those of you who are getting into this on a budget, Sketchbook is for free. 
so you can use a you can download that program for your iPad your computer or your drawing tablet and you can use it and um, it has a lot of benefits uh, and then if you are using this subscription you can get filters and inks and different brush styles and stuff um, how did I get into working for Marvel that's a great question I I I've had a pretty strange career. I've been a toy designer for Marvel. I've worked on video games, movies, television, and cartoons. I got my first break uh, drawing um, uh, Marvel Age Spider-Man, which was a great um, comic book series that retold classic Spider-Man stories but was geared towards younger kids. And um, I got a call uh, from... uh, the edit, my editor at the time, and he, she said, hey, uh, we really need someone to fill in for this other great artist who was doing a lot of work, so I jumped in on the, the Marvel Age Spider-Man along with some other great artists to help um, finish the book, and that was my first book, and it was fantastic. Lately, I've been doing covers uh, for uh, different teams and books, and that's been fantastic. I've been doing... Um, Cosmic Ghost Rider and Power Pack and um, uh, Spider, uh, what's it called? Double Trouble with Spider Man and Venom. And I did a uh, Marvel Zombies with uh, Peter Parker and the, the ladies of his life, um, all zombified, and that was a lot of fun. I did an Incredible Hulk cover, and I've been doing a lot of stuff uh, for Marvel Make Me a Hero, which is their digital online feature which i think is fantastic uh it's um you know it's regular people who have been chosen to create their own hero and then we help tell their story and my favorite part about it is that we get to tell stories for people whose heroes are not always represented and who are looking for you know uh someone from their background you know uh whatever it may be and i love doing that i love seeing people's faces i love seeing how happy they are once they once they see their picture done um and you can check that out on marvel here uh marvel make me a hero and and it's just such a fun thing to do all right so i got a basic structure for his head he's kind of looking he's grimacing he's got that tough lone wolf shot Um, there's a lot of scratchy stuff here, which, which is sort of how I work at first. I'm not a scratchy artist when I finish my, my, I try to clean it all up, um, so that the colorist doesn't get mad at me. (laughs) I, I, uh, I try to make sure that the lines are as clean as possible for them to, to, uh, see everything. So here we just, I just saw something that I don't like. Um, I, first I, Thought it was going to be a great idea to put his arrow there, but now when I see it fully, I'm just like, nah, let's change it. So I'm going to change it up real quick. Uh, One thing I like to do while I'm drawing is I like to mirror the canvas, right? You flip it, turn it upside down. Uh, Just check to make sure um, everything is... uh, When you flip it, you get a better idea of symmetry and position of eyes and nose, uh, things like that. So... um, it helps me in that way. Uh, so let's just, uh, there you go. So you can see, ah, so look, so I flipped it and right away we've sort of got this Frankenstein cranium, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bend that out a little bit. So and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna, I think we're gonna reposition his hand a little. So now it's down here and he's holding his bow. And don't be afraid to do things like that. Don't be afraid to to uh, test your page, you know? Um, move it around, don't be afraid. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ha, uh, Satan, JR, um, 
you know, there's a lot to be said for using just a bow and arrow. Uh, that's funny. Uh, use a crossbow. Use something else. Yeah, sure. But he does it better than anybody else. And he does it working with the superpowers, right? He holds his own with the superpowers. And I think that part's amazing. And you can't discount all those arrows, man. You got exploding arrows. You got arrows with ropes and nets and sticky bombs. And I mean, his arrows, you could have a guy out there designing arrows for him all day long, different different types of arrows. And if he's designing them himself, I, you know, I never really understood that part um, growing up. Who makes all these amazing arrows? Is it him? Somebody answer that for me. Is it just him or do you think somebody else is helping him? But uh, I would love to do what he does with a bow. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, so I moved I moved his hand around um, because it wasn't feeling right. You know, uh, I just felt like it wasn't there. And I'm learning this. I'm getting used to this too. I'm drawing in 400 DPI for a change. Normally I draw around 300 and it really does change the dynamics of uh, the pencil lines. Uh, let's see, who is my... How did you know that you would like to become an artist? Well, this is a funny story for anyone who is starting a second career. I actually was on my way to a career, possibly, you know, it's hard to say, but I was on my way to a career playing professional sports. And I got injured badly, uh, really bad, um, during training prep time for my tryouts. Uh, the injury was so bad that I had to have a series of operations and have my left arm immobilized for over, uh, for over um, 18 months. So if you can imagine somebody just sitting there for 18 months... Uh, not being able to use her arm. So obviously when my arm was healed, I had to do something to get it to work again. It had atrophied very badly and I'd lost a lot of weight and size. And so the doctor suggested I start drawing. Um, and so uh, I did. I started drawing and I fell in love with it, man. The ability to tell a story for people uh, with one image and you capture the emotion that all of us are feeling about that character with just one drawing, I fell in love with it. It made me feel like I had something more to contribute later on. You know, if somebody else loved my art because, and it made them want to tell a story, write a story, draw a story, build a video game, I just felt like that was contributing, you know, contributing to something. And it made me feel, uh, made me feel really good without getting too soppy uh it it just was really nice to be able to contribute to a, a fabric of stories that meant a lot to people you know and that goes into the next question who is my favorite character to draw uh mike my favorite character to draw dude is captain america i love captain america and that's funny for a canadian to say but um yeah i love i love cap so uh i I just love for everything he stands for. I love his unwavering, mostly unwavering strength and courage. Um, it sort of seems like for Cap, the powers around him are getting stronger and stronger, right? These heroes, these villains and uh, antagonists that he's fighting just seem to be upping their game in terms of power levels. The, the meters are going off the charts sometimes. And um, for Cap, he just keeps coming back. You know, and, and nothing, I didn't think anything um, showed that more than the Avengers movie. I, I loved the last two in the in the series. Um, man, Cap was just rocking it. And I just, I just, he's my favorite. I just love drawing him. He, uh, he is really cool. So that's my favorite character to draw. Uh, Jack, at 45, is it too late to try and pursue a career as an artist? That's up to you, Jack. That's a personal choice. You have to plan it, right? If you have a family and kids or if you have responsibilities and bills, you have to look at it in a way that works. Um, my wife, when I told my wife, hey, uh, you know, sports is over. And I was lucky. I had met my wife at Extreme Studios where I got my start. Um, I told her, hey, you know, I, I want to try this thing. And she was supportive. So I took... Man, I took a bunch of jobs that were just brutal. I gave up. Uh, I had just been, when I got my first job with another publisher, I had just been accepted to the Metro Toronto Police Force 
and I thought that was it. I was going to be a cop and do that stuff. And uh, it's a true story. I actually hung up on the editor when he called me and said he wanted to give me a job. I thought it was my buddies pranking me because literally I was just about to go into the force. And so I thought it was them pranking me. So I told them to go away. And I, I think I said, I, I think I swore at them and told them to F off. And uh, <laughs> uh, then I, I quickly called back and asked the editor, hey, uh, were you guys trying to give me a gig? And they said, yeah, why'd you hang up on us? And then I got the gig, luckily. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's too late. It's just the plan, right? Do you have a plan? Uh, are you visiting conventions? Are you publishing your own art? You know, they say right now, social media is the best way to get your name out there. Publish your own art. Um, let people see your stuff. Uh, so, and keep practicing life drawing. Let me see here. Uh, yes, David, that was me who drew the women attacking Spider-Man. I felt like it was epic revenge. If you remember a previous cover, Spider-Man ate them, right? So I thought that it was a, uh, a nice little nod. And the editors were cool because I threw an Aunt May. She wasn't in the original description from the editors. And I, I, I snuck it in and I asked the editors, hey, what do you think? And they thought it was funny too. So it got to go in there. And I just thought it was a nice little nod to the uh, the previous cover. All right. So we got his bust. Um, I can't forget that there's somebody else here. So I'm going to start cleaning this up so that we can get on to the next part. And then we'll uh, – we will – get that part done all right so as you can see I've done a lot of structure and design and layout and sort of told my story for this bust um, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to switch my size here and we're gonna change the opacity to black and we're just gonna go in and do all the lines that we think are important You can see how small it is. Uh, um, one of the cool things about digital drawing is it allows you to get in really tight, right? Once you have your structure. You can get in really tight. So if you're somebody who likes who likes to throw a lot of those type of lines in and wants to throw in a million wrinkles or details, this is something that works well for me um, using the digital drawing. Plus, it's a little easier on the eyes when you have a lot of deadlines in storyboard or um, concept drawing for film or television, which I, I do a lot of uh, freelancing uh, animation character design and stuff so this way allows me to, to keep my sanity and churn out a few more work hours in a day without uh, without getting too tired or, or burnt out because if anyone who's drawing you know um, there's actually a lot of work goes into line control and drawing and getting stuff done all right let's see do artists have a chance to work from home. Yes, I think most artists do work from home. Um, the benefits of having a studio environment are fantastic. Uh, you should never try to draw in a void all the time. You have to have peers uh, and people to push you, I think. And you can do it with online studios. You don't have to do you don't have to do uh, um, in person meetings all the time. But it's important. It's important, geez, this new Cintiq pen. It's important to uh, it's important to uh, have critics, uh, helpful critics, not people who tear your work down, um, but people who are there to offer true insight to help you get better and to help you uh, push push the ladder, right? Push the steps. You want to elevate. You want to level up. You want to go from you know level one warrior to epic legendary warrior in your art. And you need to have people. You can't do that in a void. You're missing out so much if you try to do it all by yourself. Um, so it's really important. What do I do to visualize my drawings? Um, well, it depends. If if there's a if there's a mandate from an editor, uh, you know, hey, we need to have this uh, done 
then I try to make whatever they're asking for as exciting as possible, right? Because they've already figured out sort of what they want. And it's a team It's a team thing, right? It's a teamwork between you and the colorist and the editor. And uh, if you have an anchor, uh, it's all a teamwork. You should always treat it as all of you attacking this image and telling this story. Um, and, and if you're doing multiple jobs, if you're the colorist, inker, and penciler all together as one, it's a little bit different, but some with Marvel, I usually have team members. I uh, I ink, and then they, somebody else does the coloring, or uh, somebody else does the graphics and lettering. And so uh, when it's like that, I just try to give my editors exactly what they ask for. Um, I'll think of little enhancements and stuff, and I'll throw it in there. But um, it's a freelance job, and you're trying to you're trying to make your client happy. You're trying to give them the story that they want to tell. When it's my stuff and I'm visualizing it, I go very cinematic. Uh, I love a lot of big movies. I love a lot of uh, um, I love using the thirds of a camera and moving it all around. Um, I think it's important to uh, sort of create as many areas or canvas parts that you can for people to look at. And I want it to feel like if you're listening to your favorite music, no matter what it is, you know, um, that your picture is giving you the same emotion as the music you're listening to at the time or the books you're, or the films you're watching. Um, so I try to – I usually try to be very cinematic when I'm doing my visual layouts, something that could be on a movie poster or a video game box or the cover of a novel. So I hope that, I hope that uh, answers your question, Chewy. Is that chewy like chewy Chewbacca or chewy you love eating chocolate bars and stuff? Something chewy. I don't know. Uh, great name though. Leroy Moreno. Loving your work, Logan. How did you get your art into the hands of comic editors? Um, I did it I did it the way they told me to. I read books and it said go to comic cons and uh, go to the meetings and – and jeez. Uh, go to the meetings and, and talk to the editors and keep coming back. And listen, take their advice – and work on it and and listen to what they say because they're not they're not your enemy they're actually there to help you they want you to get better they want more talent and story uh coming from the fans be who become artists they did it's not a an exclusive secret club they want more people to be a part of this amazing journey and so i went to comic cons and i listened to editors um and i you know, I'd go home and I'd work on my stuff and I'd throw out pages and then I'd come back and show them. And I was very fortunate that one day uh, some editors from a publishing company um, said, hey, man, uh, we like your stuff a lot. Now, yes, I did have the I was fortunate that Al Williamson was sort of like my sounding board, you know, and um, he would give me tips and hints. And, hey, listen, this part sucks. Your hands suck. You got, you know, but. The work still had to go there. You still had to put the work in. You still had to draw all the samples and, and do the drawings. And I, I would draw eight to nine hours a day on top of my regular job. And uh, I'm not ashamed to say that my regular jobs sometimes were sacrificed for my art. I remember working at a very famous comic book store in uh, Toronto. And my boss told me, listen, dude, I know you're going to be a great artist one day. you got to keep working at it. And great is relative, by the way. He, uh, he, I think he said that to everybody there because almost all the people who worked there were great artists. But he said, listen, if you go to San Diego and you do this job, I'm going to fire you. And he, he was right. He should because that means most of my effort was into being an artist, not being the best comic book manager I could be, right? Uh, so I got the job. He was the first one to congratulate me, and then, of course, he fired me. Um, it's just um, – you got to do it. You got to do your samples. You got to go to the editors. Today's a lot easier, man. You can today you can you can do your own books. You know you can self-publish, and uh, you can do all that stuff online, and you can get it out there and share it to the masses. And you're gonna find people that love the same stuff you do. You're gonna find them. They're out there. Everybody's out there. People who love alien books, people who love superhero guys and tuxedos people who love you know it, it's all out there and you're gonna find your you're gonna find your group you're gonna find your people and you're all gonna work and love the stuff that you're into and that's probably the best way and then you get to the cons and you got your samples and you make sure you show that energy show that 
exciting positive energy that you want the editors to see because it means a lot you know it, it means a lot to them that you're putting in the effort and that you're listening to what they say and then you're coming back you know it's very rare that somebody gets a job on their first run I, I've only heard of it a couple of times um, we had a we had a, a, a young man in our studio who was so amazing, had so much skill and so much talent that the very first con he went to, I told him, you, when you come back here, you're, you're going to tell me you have a job. And he was like, what? I'm like, you'll see. When you go out, you're going to have it. But it was his attitude. He's willing to listen and learn and work hard. And then the hours he put into drawing. You know, he was always drawing life drawing and stuff. And you may know him. He drew a little book called Runaways. He was a fantastic artist from the get-go. But he never stopped uh wanting to learn and wanting to be better and uh, it was fantastic to watch him come back with his job I, I was just so proud of him it was really cool uh what else let's see um let me see uh, i think that's it so i, I somebody wrote a co question up here have you ever drawn old school with like paper and pencil yes sapphire i draw with paper and pencil all the time in fact it drives my wife nuts because whatever paper is around i draw on it it could be bills it could be bags it could be a cardboard i draw on it and then she doesn't know if she should throw it out or not like is it important because there's a drawing on it now i draw on absolutely everything i can't stop myself it's uh it's a it's a terrible thing and a good thing right because you always should be drawing um so i hope that answers your question yes i do i draw paper and pencil i use acrylics i use gouache i use pastels I use whatever helps me tell the story for a client. All right, so there's there's our boy uh, Clinton, and I think I think he's looking good enough to put to the side for a minute, um, so that I can start the next part of this layout. So we're gonna move him here, and uh, we may even cut parts of him off later. Um, just be just just a fair warning to everybody so I'm gonna do some other layers here uh, just to help out the rest of this drawing because I have an idea in my head for this drawing so we're gonna do those things now and again uh, rough sketches and quick thumbnails are so important to the process um, they help you tell a story and it keeps it in your mind right uh, and for some of you you may you may go to sleep and think and have an image in your head if you wake up draw it put it down put it away to the side that's fantastic you know keep it even if you're not ready to draw it at that moment now I'm gonna turn this off I'm sure you can all see what that is I'm gonna turn it off for now and then I'm gonna start working on the next part who are my favorite artists uh, my favorite artists Tari are um, man they range you know from Michelangelo I know that sounds funny to Jackson Pollock to uh, Jim Lee, Joe Madriera, um, Travis Charre, Frizzato, Frizzetta, Sarepi, um, Richard Corbin. Um, when I first started diving into comics as a young man, John Burns blew me away, right? Art Adams, the, Art Adams one of the greatest of all time. Um, and true story, uh, one day I gave Art Adams a giant Millennium Falcon that I had helped uh, designed with uh, the great Mark Boudreaux at, at, at a big toy company. Uh, and I got to talk to Art Adams, you know, who was like a hero to me. And to see him nerding out and geeking out about something that I helped work on a little bit, not a lot. The other guy did most of the work. But to be able to send this thing to him and send some of the other stuff that I had worked on to him and have him enjoy it was a huge plus. Man, it was a big thrill because I'd always loved Art Adams stuff. Okay, so we're going to work on the next part now. And then we're going to tie them both back together. So you're seeing a blank page for a minute. Um, and again, we're just we're just uh, filling out shapes. And these shapes are hard for me. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to beat around a bush. Uh, I think the female form is incredible. I love drawing it, but I also uh, it's so hard, right? There's so many amazing, beautiful lines on a woman. And uh, and they have grace and strength and beauty and these these lines that are incredible to draw. 
but for me, uh, it's a challenge. I, I, I work harder on drawing women than men. Um, I practice a lot. I do a lot of life drawing um, because I know it's a weakness of mine. So I want to get better. So every day I am uh, forcing myself to, be, to work harder and harder on uh, the female figure anatomy, hips. My gosh, you know, it's all... It's also important, and you look at guys like uh, Mark Brooks, a, a big Marvel fan, who who just does it effortlessly, right? I just love how how he works and how he draws and makes it seem so simple and easy. It's amazing, right? For us mere mortals, uh, it's just wonderful to see magic like that. I love it. Um, I love uh, I do the breakdowns like this again, rough. Um, I try not to accentuate things that. Although necessary are not should not be the focal point of your story, they're just physical assets like anybody else. You know, um, I try to capture the power and and I love really strong Viking warrior type, you know, uh, female heroes. So I try to I try to sneak in a little bit more uh, mus muscle and uh, power when I'm drawing uh, the female form. Um, and that's that's a that's a taste thing, right? Each artist is different. Each artist has a different uh, view about how they want to convey their characters. You know, um, I used to love the great Mike Ringo Spider-Man. Um, I thought he captured the goofiness and the seriousness of the stories so beautifully, and his anatomy just fits so perfectly with who Spider-Man was. I just loved uh, buying those books and, and diving into his his art. And Todd's stories. Todd's stories were amazing too. Um, how does the communication between pencil, line artist, colorist work? Like how is that workflow? Well, I mean, it like anything, it's a relationship that has to grow, uh, Coda. It's uh, something that you have to cultivate and you have to understand that it's a team, so sometimes it's compromise. It's about learning, um, you know, to 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 balance out what what each person wants to bring and trusting them. The most important thing is when you're working on a book with a, a multiple uh, person team, it's trust, right? You want to tell the best story that the writer has given you, and you want to convey everything that you feel fits in the story, but you have to be able to trust the people around you too, and. I think once you hit that balance, uh, it th really nice things start to happen. I think it really starts to look incredible. And um, uh, it's, again, communication, balance, and trust. I hope that answers your question. Um, that's how it works for me anyways. And I have, I get to, I've been really lucky to work with some amazing people uh, in the industry who have really helped teach me. Uh, you see that? I just buggered up that hand, didn't I? And that's going to happen. Don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid to, like I just said, bugger things up. Especially if you want to try and get better. All right, there we go. That looks better. I like that idea. So as you can tell, I'm working on Katie now. And um, um, we want to get her looking cool and... Um, I give her a dramatic pose because, you know, when you see when you see Clinton, it's very static, right? He's just sort of holding his bow and standing there. Um, she, so I gave, I made the choice of making her a lot more energetic. So here we go. Um, yeah. My pencils are kind of betraying me today. I apologize. Oh yeah, look at look at that. So dig. Like a marker, didn't it? Ah, there we go. Okay, here we go. All right. So I've liked Katie Bishop ever since that when she first showed up in. Central Park in uh, Young Avengers. 
I just thought, wow, what a, what a cool new take on a hero I like. And I, I always like seeing new things. I always like seeing things that are um, refreshed or retold or from a different perspective um, because I think there's room for it all. And I think it's I think it only enhances the stories and worlds, especially when you know there's this chance that there's multiple universes, right, and things like that. And I always liked Katie's relationship with Cassie Lang. I thought it was amazing when I first started reading that book. And of course, the great art, uh, everything about it was amazing when it first came out. So I was that I was immediately she was one of my favorites when that book first came out. I'm talking about uh, the the very first appearances. And um, I, just, I just thought she was a cool character. Um, I like I like seeing her evolution. Okay, I am probably talking too much, so I am going to I'm gonna slow it down here and get this drawing done. And again, don't worry about something looking messy. It's it's the end product, right? It's the final cleanup. Um, have I ever been tempted to draw a character slightly different and then justify it with your own story arc? Is that fully in the hands of the writer? I've never worked that way. I've always... Uh, again, like I said, it's a trust thing, right? So I trust that the editors and the writers have come up with a great story and character, um, and I'm there to help enhance that story. If I, if it's my own project, I've had my own comic books published. That's when I go crazy and try to to stretch and exercise those demons. But when I'm working for someone else, no, I've never, I've never sort of deviated from the plan. Unless they say to me, hey, listen, we don't really know what we want with this costume. Go crazy. And then I will, you know. But um, for the most part, no. That's that's not – I don't do that. I try to – I try to uh, – I try to give the editor exactly what they're asking for. It's very important, especially if you want to keep working, right? You want to – you want to mean – listen, at, at the end of the day, it's still a job, right? You're still – being a professional, you still have to account for product, you know, um, and it may be product you're very passionate about and love, and um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question a, a guy like Tom Breedroot or uh, anybody else, uh, you know, Todd DeZago or somebody else who I've worked with because they're the masters of it. That's why they got hired. Somebody trusted them to write and create these stories, and um, my job is to is to help convey that. Now, if somebody hired me as a penciler writer, then I'd go nuts. I'd go crazy, right? Because who, who wouldn't love to be able to do that, you know? And there are plenty of times when I've when I've looked at a character and you know, like Namor or another character from the Marvel Universe and got, said, God, if, if, if somebody gave me a, a blank checkbook and a, a credit card, oh my gosh, what I would do with that character, but at this point in time, that's that's not how it goes. Uh, I I I I like to keep my editors happy so that they keep asking me to come back. All right, so it seems like we're having some uh, some rendering issues here because of the the size of the file. So I am going to I'm going to downgrade the file size a little bit here, just to help everybody. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I can see it's, it's for some reason it is chalking up. Uh, how do you draw a straight line without a ruler? Uh, most of the time, it's just concentration, uh, practice, and they're probably not really straight if you were to look at them up close. They would probably not be straight lines. They would probably be very messy. So. Um, that's, that's the best answer I can give. It's probably just an illusion. Um, but I have this little tool right here. It's a ruler. So, And I have tons of rulers at my desk. 
Um, listen, if there's tools out there that are going to help you do a better job, then use them. You know, uh, there's if there's no reason for you to to draw a straight line without a ruler, then don't do that. Use the ruler. Okay. Um, you'll thank yourself for it later when you have to draw a lot of perspective in cars and, and vehicles and spaceships and guns. And tools are your best friends. Like, don't be afraid to use the, the tools you have around you. Um, they're only going to help and enhance you. Um, you know, uh, everything from Procreate to a pencil to a piece of Conte, they're all there to help you tell that story and to connect uh, your art with the fans, right? And that's super important. That's, that's so important to being engaging and to help a fan uh, realize what you're trying to tell them. And if, and, if, and if you need to use a lot of tools to do that, then do it. Don't be afraid. Just jump in the water and, and get your... your your, your feet wet, so to speak. All right, so one of the things I love about Katie and Bart is that she's kind of new school. People have drawn her bows to be energy bows with like an energy compound shooting uh, some sort of um, plasma generated or laser generated um blaster arrow and then you know barton he he looks like he's still using a graphite compound doesn't he he looks like he's still <laughs> chugging along with the old uh, uh wood and, and 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 twine like a classic robin hood sometimes and i love that uh i love that growth between the two of them and, and that cultural change So when we have her, I'm going to take a look at her with Barton and that other piece we put. Okay, great. So we have this whole thing here we've done, right, um, as we put this image together. How would I share my art if I were just starting out today? I would share my art every way I could, any way I could uh, if I was starting out today. Um, I would share my art with uh, Twitter and Twitch and all the other social medias that help people connect. I wouldn't be afraid. I would just put it out there. And uh, it, whatever worked, that, that, that's my answer. Whatever, whatever works, oops, whatever works, tell a story. That's, that's my answer. And don't be afraid um, to do that. So you're saying, hey, look, what you doing? Um, we are, we're sort of speed jumping here a little. And I think this goes back to somebody's question about visualizing, right? I, I sort of visualized all this in my head earlier. So now doing it now, I'm not, I'm not terrified about doing it. Um, and then we're going to fade this back here so you can sort of see what's happening, right? And we'll turn it off for now. And we'll turn off Barton and we'll get back to Miss Bishop. sec we are having a we're having a moment there we go there we go <laughs> sorry everyone <laughs>
I'll go in tight, tighter so you guys can see what I'm doing right now. Just working on her face. So just a little roughness on her face here. Oh, let's see what's here. How would you share your art? Who's your favorite artist to draw? Give me top three. Who's your favorites to draw? Oh, I think I said it. Captain America. Um, Wolverine. I love Wolverine and being Canadian and being named Logan. Uh, I mean, maybe that's a given. Uh, who else would I? Oh, Gladiator. I love drawing. I would love to draw Gladiator. Uh, it'd be amazing for, if an editor came up to me and said, Hey, Logan, uh, we want you to draw either the Inhumans or or something to do with Guardians of the Galaxy. And by the way, Gladiator's going to guest star. That would be pretty awesome. I would really love to have a crack at Rocket, I think. Um, he's one of the most intriguing characters that I've gotten to know lately so yeah rocket would be cool um who else that's a um maybe hulk just so you can go go crazy like remember the visceral energy from like todd mcfarland's old hulk that would be awesome if you could if you could do something like i would love to do something like that just just hulk out and i'm thrilled that marvel let me do a, a hulk cover i was so humbled and thrilled that they let me jump in on one Sorry. I, uh, yep. Oh, wow. There we go.
Stand by, everybody. Um, here we go.
apologies. Something happened. We had like a little brownout, and I lost, I lost, uh, I lost part of my uh, my devices here. But we're still going. So let's just keep rocking with what we have. Uh, for all you good people. All right, so we are still going, <laughs> and uh, I'm back. So what I'm doing now is just tightening up all the lines I like, and then we'll go in and uh, we'll clean up all these little things, right? That's the beauty of live television. Can you imagine uh, the old days when they uh, used to do this on TV and they'd have a, a glove like this, some sort of glitch, um, just pure panic, which which I was doing too. I I can I can assure you all that I am. I just started sweating and panicking because I, you know, most important to me is that everybody's having a, a good time and enjoying what they're watching. So <laughs> I apologize for. Uh, that that weird little little glitch there um, maybe maybe we can get a little bit more time added on uh, to finish this up gosh that was really strange wasn't it all right um, okay so Katie's got her boots got her legs her hips her bow all set there all right I, I saw some other questions too I will get to them um, I just have to bring them back up one sec okay so she's looking cool there questions I saw some good ones up up there let me okay Eddie how do you feel about creative blocks have you had over had to overcome one yes uh, creative blocks stink I think all creatives get them Eddie uh, that's a that's an awesome question because it's something a lot of people don't want to talk about um, for an artist a creative block can be crushing right it can feel like your whole world is collapsing especially when you have freelance deadlines and you have bills to pay you know and I'm sure there are freelancers out there that know what I'm talking about and when you get when you get a creative block how do you defeat it it's like a giant monster it's like this giant weight sitting on your head right it's it's the more you try to draw the worse it may get and then you just start questioning everything you've done you know from the past from the beginning and you just start like picking all the little details about what's wrong and not what's right what those little victories the way I get around it is um, I go out and I do something else for a while. I lift weights. I, 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 I uh, work on my car. I'll go fishing. Um, I'll write or read a book. But I always try to incorporate something else that's creative or artistic. If I can't draw, I'll try some painting. Um, I'm a big nerd. I love video games. I love Warhammer 40K, uh, tabletop games, and uh, role-playing, you know, like I like stuff like dungeon crawls and and things like that and building things so I will do those things and or cooking I'll do some cooking and that will help me get through the drawing block um, so that works for me uh, Josh what character do you have trouble drawing I have trouble drawing women and it's it's something that I've worked very hard to overcome and I keep practicing it and I draw it and I reach out to other people who draw women really well and I ask them what are their secrets so that I can get better um, one of the most important things as an artist is not be afraid to admit when you don't know something or when you need help um, because if you don't do those things if you fight yourself you're only hurting yourself right you're only hurting your chances of being a better artist so if I don't know something, I, I will ask. I'll ask the next person beside me. Hey, man, I noticed you draw fantastic women or fantastic cars. How can I do that? And then 
I'll ask them their pointers and tips just like anybody else. All right, so I've got the basic structure for, for Katie. Uh, Tyreek, how did you draw a straight line without a ruler? I think we answered that one. Uh, Tari asked, hey, who's your favorite artist? Uh, Brian Rod- or BB Rodriguez, who's your favorite to draw? Give me top three. I think I did, right? Wolverine, Captain America, and Gladiator. Uh, maybe maybe Nova, uh, if I had to jump, throw another one out there. In terms of women, Scarlet Witch, uh, Gwen Poole. I love doing the cover for Gwen Poole. And uh, Sue Storm, Invisible Girl. So those are... Those are my favorites. All right, so I'm going to tighten her up a bit now. Um, so we're going to go to a new layer. And we're just going to go in and just start cleaning up her lines a little. Now, I know some artists are all about lots of cross hatching and eye candy that way and I used to be that guy um, I think it works for some people really well uh, uh, for me um, because I feel like I'm just learning as an artist I've gone back to doing more cleaner lines in terms of uh, final product or finish um, but one day I may go back to doing a whole bunch of cross hatching I'm a huge fan of guys like David Finch and Dale Keown and, and other artists who do do that um, I wish I could do it as well as those guys. They're just fantastic at it. Um, but for me, it's really, I, I'm a huge fan of anime and, uh, the beautiful lines of, uh, of anime, um, art. And I like to think of ways that I can incorporate it into my very traditional North American art. Um, so I work hard on like things that, that influence me and maybe might work. Um, by combining the two. Uh, I know that I draw women a little bit too muscular sometimes, but that's because of my view on women and how I think it's perfectly acceptable for them to be warrior women and just as strong as men, especially if they're throwing down with the Hulks and the Doctor Dooms of the world and other other villains and uh, uh, characters. I think that they should be just as powerful and as cool as men. So that's sort of how I approach them when I'm drawing. Now, if a, a writer says to me, this person is very sleek and slender and, and sultry in her movement and everything she does, then I will, I will try to convey that to the best of my ability and, um, and hope that the readers see that when I'm drawing it, you know. Uh, let's see. If you worked on Guardians of the Galaxy book and were allowed to design your own planet, what would the planet be based off? Architecture. What is the alien species living on it? Do you focus on, do you have a favorite visual iconic environment you enjoy drawing? I love the great wintry moments, like giant, you know, forests with pine trees that are hundreds of feet tall with these great winter uh, backgrounds and mountains and snow and ice and uh, things like that. I, that's my favorite environment personally. Um, it's the thing I gravitate towards in movies and stuff. You know, you, you, you have my money. If I see the opening trailer and there's a bunch of warriors or superheroes trekking through snow and ice and, and there are creatures that represent that snow and ice, you have my money. I'm going to give it to you because I love, I love, uh, environments with the snow. (laughs) It's great. Um, but if I was building a new guardians of the galaxy planet, I would, I would do like a death planet where like. Maybe somebody, you know, bioengineered everything on that planet and, and then it got away from them. It evolved and it became something they weren't expecting. I would think that would be kind of fun to draw. So the entire planet could kill you. Even the cute animals could just, you know, in a matter of seconds, you're gone. I think that'd be cool. And just put that out there. You know, uh, somebody crash landed there and uh, they... The, you know, they have to they have to use their wits to outwit the cutest of little bugs. I think that would be kind of fun. <laughs> you know, you you see these little creatures and they all want to eat Groot and Rocket and Gamora and stuff, and then they've got to outwit the tiniest, cutest little creatures. <laughs> I would kind of I would like to draw that. Now I'm now I'm getting off and uh, on another tangent and trying to write a book in my head. Um. What else? Do you focus on a character? Do you have a favorite visual iconic environment? Okay, so we covered that. 
Can you give a refresher on your setup? Sure, I can give a refresher on my setup. I am using right now, I'm using Sketchbook Pro. It's a free program. The reason I use this is because I like to teach kids how to draw. And this is one of the easiest things to tell a parent. When you tell a parent something's free, um, they're more inclined to help out or get that program. You know, uh, because kids kids are, you know, uh, if you're a parent, you know that kids are finicky and they go through hobbies and, and things uh, daily. They love one thing and then the next and then they love something else and then the next. So, it, it, you know, before a parent knows that a kid's really into it, uh, I throw them Sketchbook Pro. And I really love – I love the pencil textures and stuff. Here, I'll just throw up this for a sec. You can see this. If you look here, you can see it just tons of different pencil filters and stuff. And it runs the gamut from cloning to filters and splatters and different brushes and blending. I think this has one of the best blending tools for blending skin and stuff. Um, quickly uh, but again it's what tool works at the time I will once I'm drawing finished drawing here sometimes for a client I will throw it into Photoshop and uh, do rendering and painting there too um, again it's whatever tools get the job done for now this setup is sketchbook pro and um, I usually set it up at 11 by 17 just like a regular comic book I'll throw all the comic book uh, bleed lines and cutoffs on my page so that I'm aware of everything while I'm drawing it and then I draw at about 300 dpi uh, most of the time and sometimes a client will ask for 400 dpi right now and that's fine too uh, if I'm doing concept and rendering stuff I'll do it at 1080p uh, and not worry so much about the dpi uh, and then just uh, convert later um, I think I hope that answers your question uh, it's a relatively quick and easy setup. You can you can pay for a subscription or you can just um, use the free program. And I believe uh, I believe that's all there is to it. All right, so we got this cool compound bow. She's she's rocking a cool bow. Um, probably some energy involved in shooting this. I mean, when you're dealing with super villains, you want a little bit of backup, some kick in this new day and age and um, I think Katie is strong enough and cool enough to to rock the energy bow so there you go um, I hope that answers your questions about setup if not just keep throwing them in there and I'll try to I'll try to answer more clearly okay so we got that we got that okay so we are almost done with all the roughs. Um, I'm going to look over at my magic clock and see how much time I have left. Um, you know, with the brown out, I, w I had intended to throw a little color on this and some, some textures in the background. But I, I, um, I think it's more important to get the inks done first, right? I think you'd all like to see the inking. Um, and I'd like to, to do the inking for you. And again, apologies. Uh, I live in Southern California and we have been uh, power hogs all week with the heat wave. And uh, it, it, it smashed my computer. It gave me a little, little bit of a brownout. And, that's where we had a little difficulty. So that's on my side. The good folks at Marvel uh, kept us all kept us all going and keeping everything. I am on a Cintiq. I use two different Cintiqs. I use a Cintiq 22 inch when I'm working uh, quickly, um, and then I have over my shoulder. You can see over my shoulder there. I have a big monster Cintiq. Uh, 34 inch I use that mostly for rendering and doing architectural design work and, and film stuff if I'm doing uh, concept boards or costuming and stuff I'll do it over there um, standing up but when I'm doing comic book stuff and that I'm over here on the 22 inch Cintiq and uh, we're a Cintiq family my son he's 8 years old he has a Cintiq and my wife who does digital coloring she has a Cintiq 
Uh, we've been using them forever. Sorry about the plug, um, but they are just fantastic tools like a pencil or pastels. They're just amazing. And uh, you know, with the Cintiq, you can, you can, um, you can, you can sort of program it or set up the hotkeys any way you like. This one here has hotkeys, um, hotkeys on the bottom, but I've I've mapped all my hotkeys to my keyboard. Who is my favorite villain? Oh man, that is a good one. Um. I, my favorite villains, when I first started reading comics, my favorite villains were the clear cut villains. You know, the, the ones, there was no gray. They were just evil and they did things for evil's purpose. Uh, but as I've gotten older and, you know, kind of more and jaded in some things, I gravitate towards more romantic villains. I like the villains like Venom, the Sandman, people who you know, uh, are obsessed or uh, are doing it out of necessity, uh, not because it's just the easiest thing. Um, I like to read their stories. I like to know why why they sort of fell down that road, um, why they, what, what motivated them. So um, how great is Loki? Loki is phenomenal. I love Loki. <laughs> Loki is great because the – the civil, civil, sibling rivalry is something I can uh, relate to. Me and my brother, uh, we loved each other so much. But the moment we were on opposite teams, gosh, it was all at war. But when we were together, nobody, uh, we wouldn't let anybody mess with us. You know, we we wanted to rule every sport. We wanted to win everything together. But the moment we were apart from each other, it was uh, open battle. You know, we just went crazy. Um, well, that's a good question, YouTube. Do different parts of comic art blend into each other? I think if you practice a lot of disciplines, you know, there's this saying, you know, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, my dad used to say that to me all the time. Don't be a jack of all trades. But I think in this day and age with the tools you have and the ability to learn and share, I think it's okay to be a jack of all trades. It still takes a lot of practice. So if you have to do six hours of drawing, you still have to do six hours of graphic arts. You have to understand fonts and layouts and and placement for lettering. It's not just putting a bunch of words in a bubble. There's an art to it. There's an art about flow and, and having a reader's eye go across a page and off the page and wanting you to flip the page. The words are just as important as the art sometimes. And you need those things to go together. And it takes just as much skill and discipline as pencils. There are a lot of great uh, letterers out there who, who are shaking, nodding their head right now t saying, yes, it's true. I have to practice and work just as hard as some artists. And you and if you want to do them all, great, go for it. But yeah, again, you got to put the work in. You got to put a lot of work in. So if you want to be the inker, colorist, penciler, letterer, uh, logo maker of your comic, you got to put all that work in together. You know, it's, 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 it's a, it's, Every part of it takes the same amount of effort, um, but it can be done. It can absolutely be done. Um, I'm going to fix her crotch because I don't, I don't like what it's implying. There we go. Okay, uh, there we go. I think she's ready to be inked too. So I'm gonna drop this down like this, and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna leave her alone for a sec. Um, and I'm asking the, the time gods how much time we have. How are we doing here? Because I'm going to go back and ink Barton now. So we're going to get him all set up and ready to go. Uh, my favorite inspiration. What inspires me to draw? Everything inspires me to draw. And it's, I really mean that. It's from movies to music to soundtracks to video games. Um, often you'll find in our house, uh, I'm playing certain uh, MMOs or, or shooters that are popular right now. Uh, I will draw, then take a 15 minute break and go do a raid or do some PVP. And then I will come back and, um, and then I will uh, 
do a little bit more drawing. Then I'll take another break and then I'll go back and do some more drawing. And all those things inspire me. I, I'm, I'm one of those people that have probably, you know, a t two TVs on, uh, the music playing, like everything has to inspire me at once. I have to have it all going uh, at the same time. Um, and whatever works for you, just, just do it, you know, whatever it is, uh, use it. Uh, what else inspires me? Reading. I love to read before I draw. I love jumping into a book right before I start drawing. Um, there's so many great visuals that I conjure up in my head or that the, the author has helped me create because of their great storytelling. So one thing I normally have is this glove that lets my hand slide across my Cintiq, but I think my son has uh, wandered off with it for his own inking purposes. It's hard to keep an eight-year-old from using daddy's stuff. If you're a dad, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're an eight-year-old, you know what I'm talking about. So right now I'm just putting all the, the sharp lines, sort of cleaning it up. And again, this part is very different for every artist, right? Some artists love to keep it scratchy and um, some artists like to keep it super clean. I think it's uh, just sort of how they be, each artist evolves and wants to tell his version of that character. Um, so for today, actually I think we're going to do that with shadow, so we'll just leave that out there. Okay, there we go. You see, I just cheated that line, tried to fix it quickly instead of doing it the right way. Should have just fixed it the right way. see uh, Mr. Barton is coming along nice and clean um, and our questions have died down um, which is either a good or bad thing if, if I've bored you I apologize <laughs> or if you're thinking of new questions um, that's good too And if you if you if you are liking this stuff and you want to see some more stuff, Marvel has a great TV uh, a great web series called Marvel Make Me a Hero. You can go over there and see uh, some of the work the entire team has done over there too. Um, 
and I've, I, I feel privileged to be able to help people tell their stories over there. Uh, it's so much fun. Um, So I think that uh, Barton's been out on a hunt for a while, so he's he's a little scruffy. He's um, he's been a little busy helping uh, Cap and the others track somebody down. So at this part, I would look at everything, and I would um, I would sort of assess where I am. You know, uh, right now the lines are a little bit lean, uh, as I say, a little bit thin. So I would probably go in and just try to uh, cook those lines a little, make them pop with weight lines, give them a little bit more weight. So you can sort of see just like this. Now I used to ink with the 108, 102s, nibs, and brushes, but um, I've been doing it this way for so long now. Other, unless I'm doing, uh, unless it's requested to do an original page comics, and then I'll use traditional nibs and brushes but I think for our purposes today they this works how do you know where to put all the render lines is it preference is it certain rules oh that's a great question Antonio uh, I think it's a blend of both man um, you know as you as you were doing those life drawings that we we're talking about and figuring out anatomy and stuff you're going to figure out what lines convey what you need to tell. Like, you know, in a quiet, calm moment, I'm not going to draw the Hulk with veins ripping out of his body everywhere because it's not needed. But in that, and, and I wouldn't do it because later on when the Hulk is fighting the Abomination or Red Hulk and you need those veins to convey that he is using more power than he's ever used before, it has more of an impact. You know, um, I, I've i been a victim of this. Like, uh, here, hold on, you guys will see what I'm talking. As soon as you see it, you know what I mean. I love this stuff. Ah, dirt, you know, rubble flying around a character. Sometimes they just look like little flies, but I, I, I am, I am a, I'm a huge addict of drawing broken bits. Like that there was just a battle and you have all these ash and stuff flying around our characters. Um. I I admit that I am a uh, I I sometimes get a little carried away with that, <laughs> you know, and uh, um, all my colorists they really really love that when I do that. They don't they don't love that when I do that. Um, I get in, I get in trouble. I'll get an email saying you owe me an extra dinner at the next Comic Con or or something <laughs> because I really made them put the work in that day. Um, how do you keep your line work so smooth? I've always been um, sort of told that I do smooth line work. Um, um, it's just something that I like to do. Uh, it's important to me as part of my process to tell a story as clean as possible for the viewer. Um, I used to be a, a, a dirt monster, you know, as much eye candy as I, as I could. But I was hiding all my weaknesses. I wasn't understanding why I was putting the dirt in there. I was just putting dirt in to hide all of my flaws as an artist. You know, I everything had to have a cross hatch or a dirt because I didn't understand uh, and I wasn't comfortable with leaving negative space. You know, for the colorist or for somebody else to come in and apply their magic to. So I uh, I would. I would just like fill stuff up and not understand or not trust the process with the whole team in the beginning. 
and uh, it hurt. And also because I didn't know any better, you know, uh, like again, when you're self-taught, there's a lot of things you're going to stumble with and uh, you learn on the go. And uh, I received some super harsh criticism from the fans, uh, deservingly so. They were expecting more from an artist, and I should have I should have respected and given them more by practicing harder and understanding my craft. Um, it's important, right? We have a relationship between the artist and the comic book fan. You're giving me your money with the trust that I'm going to give you a good story. And so I have to put the best work forward. I can't, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to do this at this level and only give you 80 out of 100. You know, it, that for me, that, you know, I, I, as a toy designer, there was a lot of times when we had to sacrifice and, and give only 80% on the shelf. And oh, I would, I would just sit at home angry because I, there was a kid out there who didn't get the whole 100% story I wanted to tell him. You know, uh, and it's the same with my line work. Um, I want people to think, wow, you know what? He really put an effort into this for me. Thank you. I'm going to buy the next book from this publisher. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with the best, like a certain company, Marvel, uh, you want to you want to give the fans the best you can give them because I think they deserve it. You know, I'm a fan. Uh, I love my comics. Oops. And uh, I want to see my favorite artist give me the best. So um, it's the same for me. I really want people to have the best experience for that dollar. Or five or six or seven, whatever it is, you know. All right, so. So something like this, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be truthfully honest with you. Um, because of my OCD, I would probably give this an unnecessary second and third pass. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I would just to make sure I felt comfortable with the line art. But what that does sometimes is take away your energy. So it does look super clean, but you do lose uh, some of your energy, right? So um, we're not. That's not what I'm doing this time. Because I know we are pressed for time. And uh, all right, so just let me uh, get in here real quick. Yeah, Comic Cons, I'm notoriously slow because I try to give people who, you know, who come for a sketch or a book signed, I try to give them the same level of detail um, on every drawing. And my, my wife is always telling me to hurry up. And I feel so bad for people just standing there. Um, I bet everyone's missing not no Comic Cons this year. I hope you're all finding ways to... Uh, to sort of scratch that itch. There's a lots of great Marvel content on TV. Um, I've been watching a ton of stuff that I missed because I didn't have the channel or something else. Okay, so there's Mr. Barton. Let's get his, oh, we need his bow. So here's that ruler we we're talking about. Uh, so something like this, I'm not going to just freehand it because I think it would I think it would look jarring if I freehanded the shafts of the arrow, the arrows, right? After all, everything else is so clean.
Okay, so uh, to recap, um, it's not about age, it's about the effort, right? So if you're thinking about jumping into this, it's got you, you have a plan and have an and 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 be realistic with yourself, right? If you if you do your first drawings and you realize that there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, then don't expect on you know success in a week or two weeks or something. Really think about the craft and what you have to put into it to get what you want out of it, right? Um, and here's something I learned that's really important. Don't compare yourself to what you perceive to be the worst artist in the industry. Okay? Um, don't do not do that. It's I, I think it's the wrong... Like, don't say, well, I'm, at least I know I'm better than this guy. Everyone thinks he's terrible. Don't, don't do that. Strive to be as good as the person you think is the best. That's more important, I think, than than just squeaking in and getting some sort of job. Um, strive to be the best. Strive to, strive to work hard at it. And I think you can't go wrong um, that way. And it'll give you a better understanding of where you need to be as an artist. Right? You, we all know. We all have that voice in our head that tells us, hey, you know, you may want to be this guy, but you're going to have to put this much more work into it. Okay? Okay. Um, there was a time when I wanted to be, uh, Travis Charay, but like in a day, you know, and it, it took me a long time to realize like, dude, that's not reasonable. You have to put the same work in that Travis put in and trust me, Travis put in a lot of work. So those are the type of things you have to sit down. If you're a, an artist who's coming into it late, you have to be able to be honest with yourself and say, okay, so maybe I won't be doing uh, Fantastic Four this time next year, but maybe I will have my own book out, and maybe I will have spoken to three or four editors and gotten great feedback. You know, and maybe I've connected online with an artist group of people who want the same thing I want, and I've heard their stories, and I've gotten experience that I didn't have to suffer for. I've taken their life lessons and sort of added it to mine quickly. That's that's a great way to do things, you know. Uh, share combined experiences as artists. You know, listen to other people tell their stories about why they're not where they are or how they're getting closer or how they succeeded and emulate some of it. Try and do it yourself. Try and, okay, well, that worked for that person. I had always wondered if that was going to work. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it that. I'm going to try that. I'm going to initiate that into my plan uh, to become a professional artist. Because uh, sometimes um, just listening and relating will help you hit that next level, right? Okay, so here, look at that. So, this part's going okay, this part. All right. Okay.
uh, recap. Um, my favorite characters are Wolverine, Captain America, and uh, Gladiator. Um, I would love to draw Nova or Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I would love to work with Dan Abnett. I think that guy's a rock star. I would love to work with Todd DeZago again. <laughs> um, just making sure I got all the recaps. Uh, I use a Cintiq 22 inch and 34 inch. Um, I turn off the touch capability because it drives me crazy. I like uh, pizza with bacon, but not pepperoni. I think it's I think it's uh, a heresy to put pepperoni on your uh, or pineapple on your um, pizza. I love eating Cap'n Crunch, but I don't because I know I'll eat too much of it. Uh, what else? I love uh, drawing with a pencil and paper still. I still do it. Um, I think uh, my favorite villains are the ones now who are a little bit more tragic. Um, for somebody who asked that question. Um, so like Sandman, Doctor Doom. Uh, and, you know, Doctor Doom... I used to think he was crazy, but now I, there's more to him, right? He has more layers as I got older. Uh, I used to think the Punisher was a bad guy. And I used to love him for it, even though he, I thought he was a bad guy. Now I don't think he's a bad guy. Now I, And I love what Frank's doing with him, or Frank Thierry did with him. Um, and I, I was thrilled and honored to be able to draw uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. It was such a... I just felt so humble and blessed by... Um, the editors for having that gig um, it was such a great time and uh, somebody asked me about drawing blocks so drawing blocks drawing blocks are tough um, the best way to get out of them is by not giving up um, you know it's so easy for depression to creep into our into our our minds and our hearts and our body and the energy that gets sapped away from depression right I'm sure there's uh, a couple of fans or viewers who can relate, um, and you can't, you just, you just can't let it. You got to find other things that inspire you and keep you going. How do I remain focused during drawing? Well, it's a job. You know, as much as I love it, it's still a job. And I've got an eight-year-old who needs karate lessons and baseball, and I have um, this amazing wife who, who. Uh, loves to cook and and loves to um do diys and you got to pay for all that stuff you know you gotta you have to take care of the people that take care of you um so part of that is the motivation right i, I tell myself listen get this stuff done so we can all um enjoy things that i did well i grew up with nothing a uh, little bit of transparency i grew up in one of the worst areas in toronto i grew up super super poor um and when i mean super poor i mean super poor um and so i don't take anything for granted now and i try to give my editors the hard work that they deserve by trusting and, and hiring me and so that's how i remain focused um chris christy cream um and so i hope that answers your question uh, I also remain focused because I love what I do. You know, it's not it's not so much work when you're doing something that you love, right? It's more about um, enjoying the moment, all the hard work that got you here. You know, that allows you to do this for a living. Whatever it is, writing, film, editing, uh, creating, being a nurse, being a teacher, being a doctor, you know, whatever it is. Um, there was a time when I thought the service was all I wanted, and I put the same amount of work into it. How do you know when a piece is done? I often get stuck touching up everything forever. That comes with experience. Uh, I learned from guys like Dan Panosian and that. Like you're, you know, if you're an artist and the moment you finish a drawing you hate it, that's actually a good thing because it means you're still hungry and you want to keep going and learning. Um. I don't know. What, the way I can tell the drawing is done is usually when I put my signature on it after I finish inking and coloring it. Um, but again, that comes with trusting yourself. And, you know, maybe you're putting too many lines because you feel like you're missing something or, or the, 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 the reader is missing something that needs to be there. 
and maybe the truth is it doesn't need to be like you just have to trust yourself and throw that signature down and you're done you know maybe it's just uh sometimes it could be just psychological like you could really have finished it five or six minutes ago my wife says that to me all the time she's like you didn't have to do that extra page of inking you know you didn't have to throw that on there and man a lot of times she's right shh, shh don't say anything uh, a lot of times she's right um but uh you'll as you keep drawing and working on your craft you'll start knowing when you're finished okay i i am cranking as hard as i can here for the gods of this video um i i apologize for the power outage um, I know that slowed our time down. We should be finished by now. Uh, and Kate deserves more attention than this. But this also isn't called Logan TV. It's Marvel TV. So I know we got to wrap it up soon. Um, while it's nice and quiet and there's no more questions, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who tuned in, um, who gave us a like on on Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram and stuff. Man, it was so I, it was so amazing. I uh, I'll admit I I was blown away by the likes and tweets and. I also liked your passion for your shield show. All those people who who want to see that shield show happen, I love seeing that too. Um, it's great that we have such a unique community where we love so many of the things. They, they, they tie us all together, even though we all come from different places in this world. you know. And I loved watching the passion that the fans showed for everything Marvel is doing right now. So thank you for coming and tuning in. Thank you for asking all these great questions. Um, I really appreciated it. it. made me feel less nervous knowing that you were asking questions and you were uh, a part of this with me. Um, and I, I hope that, um, I hope it helped any young aspiring artist who want to get better and want to grow. I hope this was a little bit insightful. Um, thank you to the Marvel people for reaching out and asking me to be a part of something so amazing and wonderful. Uh, I just had such an amazing time. Um. It was so much, so much fun. All right, let's, oops. Oh, so tomorrow's comic book Wednesday. That's cool. I used to love going to the store and I can't wait to go to the store again and just sit in the aisle and read comics. Pretend I'm talking to myself so somebody says, oh, I love that book too. How long have you been reading it? <laughs> I don't know if anybody else says that, but I'm that guy. Anything to get people to talk about comics with me. All right, so there she is. Um, if you want to follow me, uh, I have a really weird and obscure Twitch. I am uh, Logan Lee 37 on Twitch. You can follow me there. What I do is I do live, live drawings, uh, of video game characters and, um, I play video games with my, my son and, um, I'm terrible. So I ask the, I ask people watching to chime in and give me hints. Um, so you can, you can follow me there. I love doing live drawings there. Uh, the drawings I do there are often for charities. If I'm doing a pencil drawing, the drawing there will then be auctioned off to help uh, various charities, um, ones that are close to my heart and that um, help a great deal of Americans uh, when times are tough or they're going through an illness or something that they can't beat on their own. Um, you can follow me there for tips on drawing. You can follow me there for um, – I do a lot of miniature base painting and stuff and give tips on that stuff. I talk about my time as a toy designer. So, again, Twitch TV, 
uh, Logan X, Logan Lee 37, and um, you can also follow me on Facebook on Logan Libera. I have an art uh, an art page uh, there, and um, I would love to hear and see a lot of you on those pages and talk comics more and continue. Um, again, please watch uh, the Marvel Make Me uh, a Hero. I love doing that work for them. And, and it's it's really a unique voice. You know, it really gives people who might feel as Marvel fans that the, nobody's listening. It really gives them a chance to shine and be a part of this amazing culture that we all love, right? Um, and maybe, maybe you're the next one. Maybe you're the next person to do it. Okay. Um, what have I got? I got one minute left. I got three minutes left. And I got a bow left and a shoe. Okay. Um... Dang, I wanted to get to I wanted to get to the rest of it, but I think we might we might have we might have messed it up with that power outage. Nice. Right, I just got a lightning bolt message from the gods of this video telling me I have a little bit more time, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, thank you so much for the engaging questions. Um, I hope that some of my answers helped you guys on your journeys, whatever they are, as an artist or a parent encouraging an artist. Uh, I just want to say if you are a parent, um, don't give up on the artist, okay? Push it and let them let them fly because there's so many jobs that they can do, not just being a comic book artist. Animators, designers, creators, concept designers, fashion designers. There's so much that they can evolve to and become from drawing. So if you're a parent out there and you're, you're on the fence, you're like, I don't know, I don't want him to starve, I love my kid, um, just encourage them and let that power grow because... There's a ton of jobs out there that do really well as artists, you know, um, and uh, you also you're cultivating something that we need so much. We need more creators in the world. We need more free thinkers and storytellers. We can never have enough of those, right? Okay, so um, I know there's some parents out there going, you, shh, but uh, I really believe that we need more storytellers. True story, I turned the air conditioner off because the noise would have drove you all crazy. So it is like hot. <laughs> I hope I'm not all shiny on... Oh, the camera's gone, so we're okay. So we're safe. <laughs> are gone so thank you again for all your questions i really appreciated it um it was really amazing uh and you know what you asked a bunch of questions that i asked when i was uh starting out and trying to become a comic book artist. You, so don't be afraid about asking those questions those were all the same questions that i asked and other uh, uh, all artists ask so uh, it, you're doing great
Oh, and if you like this new format where we did it this way with the combined sort of pinup style, make sure you let the crew know, you know. Um, I think they took a big chance on uh, trying this, and uh, I hope you guys liked it. All right, so there's Kate. Oh, I knew it. I knew we were missing one boot. Um, if you have any more questions and the show runs out and you think of a new one, you can always hit me up and ask me on one of the channels. You can always, I don't mind. I actually love talking to people about the progress and seeing, seeing new success stories. Um, so if you, something else pops up in your head and you're like, oh, you know what? I forgot to ask him this. Just shoot it to me later and uh, I'll try to answer it for you. Appreciate Marvel giving us a little bit more time to, to wrap this up. Okay, so so what we're going to do now is we're going to oh, great, perfect. Right now, I'm just thickening up Kate's lines so that she pops away from Hawkeye. Such a fantastic character. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing her come to life. My my interpretation of her. There's so many cool way, ways she been she's been drawn. So I really hope you like this one. Okay, great. Okay, so we're gonna do this under here, and then we're gonna go up here. We're gonna drop this like that. Yep, great. That way, when we turn Mr. Barton on. Now she pops out of the picture. You can see it there. And then we had this little piece back here, if you guys remember. So now we're going to
Ooh, Mamma Mia. There we go. A little bit of quick improvise. Right. There you go, uh, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop, um, barring some crashes and uh, power outage here, um, but I'd like to say thank you to everybody who let me do this. It was such a thrill. Uh, mostly thank you, Marvel, uh, for allowing me to be here and to do this with the fans. I really appreciate it. What kind of music do you play?